You know, it's an old saying in this world. Never forget where you came from. You know, when David, I mean, when Joseph was thrown into that pit, and his brothers left him there to rot. You know, he told his, his father, a, told them a dream. He was like, I had a dream when your corn starts ball down to mine. Are we going to serve you? I'm your father. So, <laughs> Dad, look, here come the dreamer. Here come the dreamer. Look at this dreamer. <laughs> but this dreamer, here you go again. We're going to bow down to him. We're going to make sure that never happens. All things work together for those that love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Favor started happening. They set him on the right path. And he told his brother and when he finally revealed himself to them in the future, I'm your brother. And they bowed. Not that he wanted them to. The position he had, they had no choice. He didn't make it that way. God did. And he helped the children of Israel. And he helped Egypt. And he helped the other nations. He didn't refuse. Anybody who wanted to buy, they sold. They bought. We got places in this world and there. Refuse service to people because I don't like how you look. I don't like how you what you are. Think that's God that did half of them go to church on Sunday. I don't care if you're gay, straight, black, Asian, Chinese, white, Italian. British, it doesn't matter to me. Food is food. Help is help. Entertain strangers. Be careful to entertain strangers. Some people ain't entertaining strangers. They're entertaining brother, sister, mother, cousin, auntie, uncle. That's it. I know you. Don't give to those who expect to receive something in return. They have their reward. Oh, that's that scripture. Oh, I forgot that was scripture. That's scripture. You have your reward. I guess your reward from who you got it from. You said, but when you do your arm, sound out of trouble like the heathens do. Let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So, no, you don't supposed to broadcast what you do either. This is just testimony. You don't supposed to broadcast it. You don't supposed to get on Facebook. I do all this for everybody as soon as I need help. I thought from the Lord comes your help. Or oh, you was doing it for expecting them to repay you? You're wrong. What church you go to? So I can go to correct your preacher right quick. <laughs> From the Lord comes my help. Oh, man. You're a trip. I know. I know. My mom always said something to me. I'm going to be a fool for Christ. And I ain't start understanding that until I start becoming a fool of Christ myself. <laughs> You're a fool, what? A fool for Christ's sake. Glory be to God. You understand? Am I saying you're going to help everybody? No. Some people are going to refuse your help. If your peace, if my peace be there, let your peace return to you. If it's not, leave. Sayonara. Bye. Jesus didn't heal as many in his own country because of unbelief. A lot of people ain't going to believe in the Christ that dwells in you, so they're not going to get help. And it's not your fault for them not getting help. It's the fault of them not believing in the one whom he sent. Not to get your head puffed up with pride. But we work for God. What he told the rich man. Get all your hands to the pool. Take up your cross on the daily and follow after me. That's what he told him. So the rich man was willing to go by the Ten Commandments, but not willing to follow after Christ. So there's a difference. You got people who live by the Ten Commandments, obey every last one, but ain't following after Christ. Wow. You know that, right? The Ten Commandments part of it, but it's more to it. Christ lets you know that. He said, but it's possible with me for you to gain worldly riches and enter the kingdom of God. So he told you what you got to do with those worldly riches. Okay, how big do you want your church, homie? How big do you want your church? 
I'm finna pass by a church right now. It's so big. How big do you want it? I'm just saying. It's something I, I realize. It's part of the, it's a verse in the Bible that some of the people was coming to uh, Peter's house, I think. And it was so many, the crowd was so big, they opened the roof up. Y'all better learn some things. Make your church that look like a stadium. <laughs> it ain't got to be too big, but you know, it's something called outside. But we didn't come for the women, made everybody so comfortable now. You understand? Outside don't seem like a church. Jesus ministered much. The Sermon on the Mount. You understand? All this and that. How big do you want your church? Let's be real. Millions and millions of dollars in the church. And thousands and thousands of people inside the church struggling. And, and God supply all your need according to his riches and glories in heaven. Guess what? You the church. You over his storehouse. Oh, did I say that out loud? But I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn this phone a little bit. And as I go, you're going to see this church they just built over here on Whitaker Avenue. Here it is. You're going to start seeing it in a second. Look, look how big it is. You're going to see it. That's, they just added to this church, right? That's that's one street corner, right? Let's see what else they got. I ain't finished yet. All right. EA Palmer Memorial Building. There's another part of the church. Oh, you keep going. Another part. Hmm. How big do you want your church? If, until you start realizing this the church. Look, that's the church. That's the church too. Look, look at that church. I like that church needs some help. That church needs some help right there. You get my point. A lot of churches just worry about the building. But when you build ministers and disciples and apostles, look how much this church expands. It expands to this house. It expands to that house. It expands to that house. When you start thinking outside the box. How hard for them that trust in the riches to inherit the kingdom of God. You know, I can't remember, I can't always misquote this, but I can't remember here. Don't make me rich that I, I mean, so don't give me less so I got a beg or don't give me so much that I forget about you, says the Lord in, the, in his words. Give me just enough, man. <laughs> Make me content with things as I such have. And then there's another verse. He was like, basically like, don't keep me a lot so I can I always say from the Lord comes my help. You know, so many times uh, when I was going through a lot of hard times, and I didn't realize how I was going to get out of it. And I remember this. i never forget it. My son and my daughter. Dad, what are we going to do? I'm like, I don't know. But God will make a way. And guess what? He always did. And I, 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 I got to believe in myself that that's strength in their faith. And mine. Do you know that? It made them believe better. And me. And this happened so many times. You know? So the people were like, sometimes you go through hard times. So you can give God the credit. And then beforehand, and then God would come through and make a way. And then the people would be like, oh, Lord, it is the Lord. It is. Trust, trust it in the Lord does work. But you know, sometimes when you get a lot of money, you stop trusting in what the Lord can do. And you start saying stuff like this. I worked hard for this. I worked hard for this. You can get a lot, too, if you work hard. I know a lot of people that work hard. That don't mean they rich. And that don't mean they don't work hard as you did. It is what it is. Somebody got to work at these convenience stores. Somebody got to work at McDonald's. Somebody got to work at this moving company. Somebody got to work at that barber shop. Somebody got to make it work at sanitation department. Somebody got to do all these things, people. So for you, for your people to lift themselves up like they better than somebody else, not realizing that everybody serves a purpose. 
That'll stop you from getting your head so big in the clouds. I don't care how rich you are. If these people stop working on the roads, that, that $100,000 car won't be able to drive on it. You understand? <laughs> I'm just being real, people. I'm trying to open your eyes to some big things now. How hard is for those that trust in riches to inherit the kingdom of God. A lot of people who get rich to forget their purpose. I always go back to what T.D. Jakes said. I believe T.D. Jakes is a good preacher. I all love them all. And we all got flaws, but I got to call it like I see it. T.D. Jakes told his congregation one time, you can find a video. He said, if something were to happen here, my people coming to get me. And I could have sworn that congregation in there was his people. And that upset me. And I don't really listen to his videos as much anymore. Sometimes he say some good things. Sometimes all of them do say some good things. Some things, you think just because people are false prophets and false teachers that they don't say some good things sometimes? Because all things work together for those who believe and those who love God. But they're going to say some BS sometimes too. But I'm telling you, he showed a video like, look, this is my house at first. Now this is my house. So you, you show videos like that, you make the congregation think, well, eventually you're going to get a house like T.D. Jakes. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Have a blessed day.